Are you drowning in the seas of data, struggling to make sense of it all? Do you find yourself spend endless hours manually sweeping through Excel spreadsheet, trying to uncover those critical insights that can really drive decision? You are not alone. In today's data-driven world, the ability to transform data into actionable insight is a superpower. And that's where Excel Pivot Table come into the rescue. It will help you to drive instant insight like a pro. No more wrestling with data. Hi, my name is Lin and I'm a data analyst and automation expert with experience in banking and logistic industry. Throughout my career, I've spent years analyzing millions and millions of data points to build report and dashboard that help business owner to get good insight and make informed business decision. I'm looking forward to share my experience with you so that you can reclaim valuable hours in your days. In the previous video, we've helped Excel Property to create a customer survey using Microsoft Forms. We've seen how data is collected and stored in Microsoft Forms. And then we use Excel Power Query to extract the collected data and transform it to a proper data ready for analysis. After all those hard work, we're ready to go to the next step. We will be analyzing the data and provide Excel Property Management Team the insight on customer experience in their new opening shop. Data analysis process starts long before you even make any calculation. So first, let's cover some groundwork before you even analyze your data. Once that is done, we will be performing data analysis using pivot table and Excel formula. As usual, we will start with the basics and then we'll move on to more advanced technique. I will also provide you tips and tricks on how to work faster. You can download the data file using the link in the description below to follow along with me. Please feel free to rewind the video when needed. Ready to level up your data analysis game? Let's dive into it. Before we dive into analyzing data, there are some crucial steps that we need to take to set the stage for success. First of all, you will need to speak to the business owner, find out what is their requirement, what insights they expected to gain. Why is this important, you might wonder? Well, think of it like planning a trip. If you don't know your destination or what to do, you might end up get lost or unprepared. Similarly, without understanding the stakeholder's needs, you might end up analyzing the wrong data or produce the insight that aren't very useful. So do take time to investigate and align with stakeholder to ensure that your analysis be on the right track from the start. Now let's head back to Excel. Let's cover some best practice in designing worksheets so that when you come back to it three to six months later, you know what has been done. First of all, data. My data source should be stored in a separate sheet. If you wonder what information is behind this data, we've covered it in the previous video. You can check it out in the link here. Let's rename the sheet to data. Then I will have a dashboard sheet where I will present all my findings with graphs and jars. And for calculations, I will have multiple sheets each of them will have a specific calculation. So for example, I will have one calculation sheet for customer information and another one for customer feedback. I'm also going to give it a color code. Blue is for calculation and red is for findings and dashboard. This is only my personal reference. Now let's start our analysis. To speed up the process, I've already prepared a list of requirements from Excel Property Management Team and some instruction to guide you through the process. In Customer tab, we need to analyze some customer basic information, starting with the basic survey statistic, like how many customers respond to the survey, through which channel they discover Excel Property. And then we have customer demographic information like gender, age, 
we will be analyzing the data following this structure. So the first request, Excel Bobati provided us with the number of people they've sent the surveys to, and they want to know how many people actually responded to the survey. So how do we start? First, we need to insert a pivot table. So go to your data, select any cells in your data, insert pivot table from table or range. A pop-up will appear. Excel has already identified the range of my data source. It's asking me to choose the location where I want to load my pivot table. I will choose the existing worksheet and then I will go to the location where I want to put my pivot table and hit OK. On the right side of the Excel window, you'll see a panel called Pivot Table Field. This is where the fun begins. You can take the column headers from your data and drag them into different areas in Pivot Table to make your analysis. So for example, I want to drag the ID to the value area here. It will perform an aggregation calculation. And the default measure is the sum. But we don't want the sums, right? We want to count the number of responses. Don't worry, you can always change the measure aggregation method. Simply right mouse click on the value, choose value setting, and then select the calculation that you want. I'm going to select count. And voila, we have the number of responses in fill symbol clicks. And now we're going to calculate the rate, simply use Excel's formula. So the response rate will be the total response divided by total sense. And I want this in percentage. So on your keyboard, click Control Shift 5. Next, let's find out from which channel customer find us. I will not go through the entire process of inserting a new beaver table again. Instead, I'm going to simply copy and paste this pivot table here and reuse it for another analysis. To answer the questions, we need to look at the channel dimension. I simply drag channel dimension into the row area here, and it will give me the distribution on the traffic for each channel. What about the percentage? We need to drag in another measure. So I'll again drag the ID column to the value field. Like before, I'll change the measure aggregation type by select the calculation area I want to change. Right click, choose value field setting. Now I'm going to show the value as grand total. Click OK. And now rename it into percentage. You can also apply sort in pivot table as well and not just any standard sorts. I want to see the channel with the most traffic sorts from the top to the bottom. No problem, pivot table will help you to sort it out. Click on the filter button here, go to more sort options. I want the biggest number to be sorted on the top, so I will choose descending and choose to sort by count of ID. And voila, with fusible clicks, I've now seen clearly that the social media brings the most customer to the shop by far. And you can advise the business that they should pay more attention to social media for the next marketing campaign. All right, I'm going to do the same analysis for customer demographic information. We want to know their gender and their age. So it has the similar structure like the analysis we've done on the general dimension, right? So let's take advantage of the existing work. So I'm just going to copy the pivot, kick out the channel, and update it with the gender dimension. I'll do the same for the age groups. And we've completed our analysis on customer basics information. Let's move to the feedback tab. We will start with the calculation of the net promoter score then the customer satisfaction score, and finally, the average rating of a specific aspect of the shop. With Net Promoter Score, NPS, we measure how likely customers are to promote our brand to others, and it's defined as the percentage of promoters 
minus the percentage of the detractor. So how do we get to the percentage of each classification? As you can see, the structure is similar to the analysis we've done before. So again, I will copy the existing pivot and update the row dimensions into NPS. Now that we have the percentage, we can apply a simple subtraction percentage of promoter minus the percentage of detractor. And we have our NPS score calculated. The next one is customer satisfaction, CSAT. Here we only care about the percentage of the customer with good rating. Similar to how we calculate NPS, copy the pivot table, change the row to CSAT, and we have a good rating percentage available. Our final calculation is regarding the overall average customer rating and the average rating of each aspect of the shop. So first, I will copy the pivot table, remove existing row dimension, and also the count measure. So let's drag in each of the rating information to the value field here. Now we have the total score, but the display is not what we want. We want to see this number in the vertical format so that it's easier for us to analyze. So how do we fix this issue? Notice that when you place more than one measure in the value fields, Excel will automatically create a placeholder for all the measure called values right here in the column area. So by default, all the measure are now displayed in the horizontal format. The trick is we need to drag this placeholder value to the road area. And there you have it. Our pivot table is now display all measure in the vertical format. Now, how can we extract the average out of here? So simply change the measure from sum to average. And for the overall score, I will simply take the average of individual aspects. And we'll finish all our calculations regarding customer feedback. Now I'm going to quickly rename all our pivot tables. I'll show you in a minute why. So click on the pivot table you want to rename. Then go to the pivot table analyze, pivot table, and rename it. I'll repeat the process for all other pivot tables. As you notice, each of these individual pivots are not interact with each other. Let's say I want to know what is the female response rate. The information is in the gender pivot, while I have to apply the female filters on this pivot ID here. I cannot use one pivot table to filter another, and I don't want to change the structure of the pivot table because it's linked to my calculation. So how do I fix the problem? I can use slicer. To insert a slicer, select the pivot you want to add the slicer. In the field list, right-click on the dimension and choose Add Slicer. And we have our slicer added to the sheet. Now, if I choose female, the number is automatically updated in the pivot table. But doing it this way, you can only add one slicer at a time. So let me show you another way to add multiple slicers in one go. So select the pivot table you want to add the slicer, go to Insert, Slicers. Now you can choose to add multiple dimension at a time. I'll add channel and age group, and I have multiple slicer inserted. We still have the problem though. All the slicers are now linked to only one pivot table. What if I want to know which channel is the most popular among the 80 minus age group? We're not going to add a new slicer for each individual pivot. 
we are going to change the interaction of these slicers toward all the pivots. How do we do that? Right click on the slicer, report connections, select the pivot you want the slicer to interact with. Now you can see the benefit of naming your pivot table in advance because here it will help you quickly identify which pivot table you want to select. So my slicer here is H group. I want it to interact with all the pivot table except for the H one. I'll do the same for slicer channel and gender. So now when I click on one slicer, the value in different pivot table are filtered accordingly. And we've successfully connected all the pivot table together using Slicer. I hope you enjoyed the video. The key takeaway here is before analyzing your data, familiarize yourself with the information that you're dealing with. Be crystal clear about your objective. Define what you want to achieve with your analysis. This practice will help you to save times, avoid frustration, and make your analysis more precise. It is also important to structure your worksheet and calculation accordingly, so that when you come back to it months later, you can quickly catch up on what has been done. When it comes to the actual analysis part, Pivot Table is your best friend in this journey. Pivot table allows you to summarize large data set in seconds. No more manual sorting or endless calculation. You immediately gain quick, actionable insights that help you drive decision making. But our job is not done here. Now here comes the question. How can we communicate our findings more effectively? And that's exactly what we'll be covering in the following videos. We will visualize our findings with graphs and charts so that the viewer can quickly grasp the information. Thank you for joining me on this data adventure. If you find this video helpful, please help me to share it with others who might think it's useful. Your support not only helped me to grow my channel, but also help countless others out there who are looking for boosting their productivity and excel in their job. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions, so please leave a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You don't want to miss on any of my latest content. See you next time!